Welcome! It's time to talk about the magical world of wizards and druids. That's me casting a spell. Um, before we begin talking about the magical world of wizards and druids, I want to talk about our backer content. So, a lot of people, about 80,000 people, maybe even more by now, were extremely generous and donated a lot of money to make Pillars of Eternity happen. Uh, a lot of the people who backed us, they backed rewards for content in the game. A lot of people have filled those backer surveys out at the Pillars of Eternity website, and we've already started to make a lot of that content. In the update today, you can see some of that content that we've already done. We think it looks pretty cool. The people we've talked to who've backed that content are very happy with it. We want to make you happy. If you've backed content, please, as soon as possible, get us your information. Our deadline for that information is March 31st. This is a practical consideration for us because we need to get to alpha with all of our content, and that includes backer content. So please, that's only about two weeks. If you have not yet filled out your backer survey, please do so. If you have questions, please contact us with your questions so we can help you fill out your backer content. We want to make it, and we want it to be cool. All right, so now let's start talking about wizards and druids. First thing I want to say is that along with priests, wizards and druids are the most traditional of the casters in our game. We also have ciphers, we also have chanters, they're a little, they're kind of wacky. Uh, wizards and druids and priests all have a more traditional approach to how they learn spells, how they cast spells, and so on. So you'll gain first level spells, then at third level you'll gain second level spells, then at third level you'll gain, or I'm sorry, fifth level you'll gain third level spells and so on, which is very familiar progression from the Infinity Engine games and D&D. You will cast spells more like a sorcerer does in 3rd edition, where from your list of spells, you can cast, you can mix and match, you don't have to pre-arrange or memorize those, you just have to have them in your available list. When it comes to wizards and druids, the things they share in common, other than the general spell casting structure, is that they're both very good at doing area attacks, uh, whether it's causing status effects, um, inflicting damage, all that sort of stuff. If it's an area-based thing, those two classes are very, very good at it. At range, they can hit a huge area and cause a lot of damage. Uh, but we did not want those classes to be restricted just to doing that. They also have cool uh, either personal defense abilities or support abilities that are pretty darn cool. Uh, the wizard mostly focuses on personal defense abilities. Uh, we know a lot of people want to be able to play sort of gish type characters, those sort of melee-oriented wizard characters, um, and they have a lot of personal spells that can do that. Very few, if any, actual team buffs. They're mostly focused on themselves. And then druids have a mix of sort of personal spells, but also some support abilities, some healing abilities, and things like that that are pretty darn cool. Uh, some of the... Fa- I, I listed a lot of spells in the update, but I wanted to talk about a few that I think are particularly cool. Uh, the wizards have the Minaletta's spell. So Minaletta... We kind of want, we kind of like the idea that wizards, wizard spells have personality to them, so they tend to have wackier names. Uh, they tend to have the names of the inventors incorporated into them. So Minaletta's spells, she has a whole family of spells that are like the missile spells in D and D. So she has Minaletta's minor missiles, Minaletta's bounding missiles, and Minaletta's concussive missiles. The bounding missiles are my favorite because you cast them at a target and they will then bounce to other targets all over the place. Um, it's pretty fun. You can hit a lot of targets in an area, even when there's a mixed group there. You'll have your guys in with enemies, and the bounding missiles will bounce around. That's really fun. Wizards get some other weird stuff. They get Arcane Reflection, which is kind of like spell turning, so they can bounce spells around. They also get a uh, Minor Grimoire Imprint. I really like this one. If you have Minor Grimoire Imprint, you can target an enemy wizard and steal a spell out of his Grimoire or her Grimoire. So the, uh, the idea with wizards is they have more spells total than the other spell casting classes, but they can only cast spells that are in their currently equipped grimoire. And the grimoire is a big old magic book that they use to cast their spells. And if you want to switch out the spells available to you, you have to switch out the grimoire. Um, so if you use minor grimoire imprint, you can, for a short period of time, steal a spell out of another grimoire and then use it and cast it for free. So that's a pretty fun spell. Uh, they have Sitzall Spirit Lance that makes a big... I, lo- I really like the weapon-type spells. So, uh, you know, there are spells in D&D like Decastave or um, uh, 
Jeez, I always forget the name of the actual second level. In our game, it's called Flaming Brand, <laughs> Flame Blade, where you you create the druid creates like a flaming sword um, and spells like that. I always thought were pretty fun. So wizards have a few of those. Um, the druids get um, they get something called rot skulls, so they can throw these little rotting skulls that cause disease and corrosion damage. Wizards get the spirit lance, which is pretty cool. It allows them to attack from the second rank and do cool like blast damage. Um, Druids get Moonwell. That's a pretty fun spell that I like because you can plant a heal over time effect on the battlefield that gives defensive bonuses. So you can kind of use it like a positional control thing. You put it down and then you keep your characters kind of clustered around it and they'll get healing over time. And uh, yeah, they, they get a lot of cool over, overwhelming waves. Another one that Druid gets that it just smacks and knocks dudes down. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. They have a lot of spells and they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, additionally, Wizards get two basic abilities that are pretty cool. The first one is Arcane Veil, and Arcane Veil allows them to rapidly increase, very uh, instantly increase their deflection defense for a short period of time. Defense goes way up. It's an emergency thing they use if they get caught in melee. Uh, it's, it's very effective. It remains valuable even as you get to pretty high level. They also have a power called Blast, and Blast adds uh, AoE damage to all their wand Scepter and Rod attacks. Wand, Scepters, and Rods in Pillars of Eternity are just ranged weapons, low damage, high rate of fire ranged weapons that any character can use, but Wizards do selected AoE damage with it, which makes it very nice when they use those as their backup weapon when they're not casting spells. Uh, additionally, Druids have two powers that are pretty valuable for them. One is called Wild Strike. Wild Strike, they pick, you pick a damage type at character creation, and that damage type gets added to any damage that they do in combat. just It's like a small proc. So when they inflict damage, they get that small amount of slash or burn or pierce or corrode damage added on top. Then additionally, they get uh, their spirit shift forms. And spirit shift forms are hybridized animal forms. There are five of them total. You pick one at character creation and you can get more over time. And each one has a special ability. So if you want to have regeneration, then you want to change into the boar. If you want to have a very high base damage threshold, turn into the bear. If you want to do AoE damage with your melee attacks, then go with the stag. We're trying to balance them so you feel that each one has a very cool power that you find value in and that you want to use so that you'll use them all throughout the course of the game. Uh, and it opens up over time to have a lot of options for you. They're pretty darn cool. Um, there's a lot of spells for them. They each have six levels of spells. We tried to make sure that every spell on the list all felt, all of them felt like spells that you would use that would be very enjoyable. Uh, sometimes they're situational, but not super narrow, so we want them to feel like they have broad appeal. I think people are really going to be happy with the way that the, the characters play and feel, and the style of the spells they have, I think, feels very true to uh, the games that we came from. So, with that in mind, please uh, let us know what you think of the stuff that's in the article, and also in the, in the video that I just talked about. Please let us know on our forums, and again, please, if you've backed the project, before March 31st, please get your backer info to us so that we can make your adventuring companies, so we can make your inns, we can make your weapons, we can make your memorials, all that stuff. We want to get everyone's stuff in, but we need that info uh, before March 31st. So please get it to us. And as always, thank you so much for watching and for all your support.